We went through some friggin' horrible mud. I I lost control of the back wheel, it was amazing. I need to learn how to do that on purpose. I went into the pub to use the toilet and the dude was like, oh, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm an influencer. And he was like, oh, you're a social, social influencer. The shame, actually. Um, I think from now on, I'm just gonna tell people I'm unemployed. Two days ago, yesterday. The bikes were brand new, now they look like this. As they should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, GoPro, please work. I do not ask for much. I just need to make one little video. Hello, YouTube. It's Owen Liz. We are in the countryside. I've just been to meet my dad for lunch. He's doing an off road course with Honda and I said that I would meet him for lunch, come and see the bikes, that sort of thing. Um, what I didn't know is that it's in this little village which is just in the middle of nowhere. There's no roads that go here. So to get here you have to do all these tiny little farm tracks. I've been in deep deep muds with no traction on my tyres and the wheels spinning and it was terrifying and I've got to go out the same way because apparently that was the way in. I thought it was a sat-nav just playing with me but no apparently that is the right way and we've got to go back so that's good. All right, this is taking too long, I'm going, bye. So I haven't got the sat-nav on right now, I'm just going to try and remember because I know the sat-nav will take me a stupid way and I had a look on the maps and there is like one bit that I can avoid. I think it's up here. Whee. Right, so that one, Samford Brett, we want to look for that. And it's just going to be a challenge to get to it. But that's okay. So my dad's doing this off-road day because he went to ABR last year. And he bought like a little KTM 390 and he just had the best time. But when you go to ABR, you can go off-road as much as you want but I don't think there's a huge amount of guidance for how to ride a bike off-road. I think they just let you go. I mean, I might be wrong. I didn't do any of the off-roading. I just think that's what probably happens. So he's booked this Honda adventure experience, two days of being taught how to do it properly. So he's having the best time ever. And I get a lot of people saying I should be doing this sort of thing, but I'm very, very scared to do this sort of thing. And I will tell you why. The reason that I'm scared to do off-roading properly, any more than just riding Sparty up a green lane, which is still pretty terrifying for me, is that I once did do an off-road day. I was very young, I think I was like 25, and I crashed a lad's day. So I wasn't even invited to take part in this thing anyway. I just decided I was gonna join in. And I invited myself onto it. And I was the only girl and I think I was also the youngest one, uh, so I got put on the little 125 and everybody else was on 250s and 400s, but I was very scared of tall bikes, and off-road bikes generally are tall, so I was quite happy with my little 125. The problem was that even though I was on a 125, and even though I had no experience, I wanted to be the fastest, and so I was making sure that I was at the front, I was making sure I was overtaking everyone at every opportunity, um, without the skills to do that and so while I was crossing a bit of what seemed like unproblematic flat field at probably about 40 miles an hour I was absolutely gunning it um, the bike just kind of jammed itself in the ground I went flying over the handlebars landed on my shoulder and my head knocked myself out broke my collarbone quite nicely uh, but in knocking myself out, when I came to, I didn't know who I was or where I was or anything. And so they called the air ambulance for me. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't need an air ambulance. And when I did kind of start to remember who I was and where I was, I remembered how much it costs the air ambulance to come out. It's like £2,000 and it's probably gone up since then. 
So it's, it's thousands of pounds for the air ambulance to come out and I knew that I didn't need an air ambulance, I just needed a regular ambulance because by this time I was a wither enough to know that it was just my shoulder that was hurting. I could walk, it wasn't that bad. So I told the air ambulance crew to go away, um, which wasn't very nice of me, but they did, obviously, it wasn't needed. Um, but very, very embarrassing. I took a land ambulance, it was like an hour to the hospital, I ruined everybody's day. And I, I didn't get very much out of it other than kind of that really awkward experience and then not being able to do anything for the six weeks that it took for my shoulder to heal. So, so that was good. All right, where are we going? Yes. That was good. And ever since then, even though this was a long time ago and even though I know why it happened and probably what I could have done to avoid it happening, um, I'm still fearful. It still is in my head. So, yeah, road bikes it is. Even though, to be fair, like a lot of the roads around here, you would want something a little bit more knobbly. But this is fine. Pinky, Pinky knows how it is. We're all right with this. This is okay. The mud earlier was kind of an anomaly. That's never really happened before. And I hope it never, ever happens again. This is quite steep. Uh... Okay, I think I came from up there. I think that was the one that I came up. So we don't go up there. We just keep going round. And this is okay. I have Angel GT2 tyres, which are absolutely perfect for every scenario that I could possibly want to take an S1000R into. And it's nice and warm today, so there's no ice. I'm not even wearing my heater kit. I have my heater gloves on, but they're not plugged in. This is beautiful. It's like maybe... 15 degrees or something tropical for a lovely March morning or afternoon, whatever. I don't know what all this clay mud is. I don't know if it's slippery or not. So far, so good. Have we reached the end? Yes. Thank goodness. Google Maps told me that there was like a petrol station somewhere. Don't need it. It's just when I see a petrol station, I can stop and put the sat nav on and it can take me back a normal way. Oh my god, look at the little pink smart car, it's so cute. Yay. So while I saw Dad for his lunch, I had a quick look at the camera, so I've given him my Insta360 for the day. And he said it would fallen off four times on camera. And I managed to find one of them. And oh my god, it is the best video in the world. It is so funny. Every time I look at it, I laugh. And it's like a nine second clip. And it is so funny. They, I mean, I guess you probably couldn't have helped it anyway because it looked like he was going down a hill. But they, they tell you that if you fall off, you need to get away from the bike. So just jump out the way or whatever. It makes a lot of sense. But this video, Dad like drops the bike really slowly. He's kind of going around a corner that's going like steep downhill. And he just, he just yeets himself away from the bike, he just flings himself away from the bike. It is so dramatic, it is so funny. Oh my goodness, this might be the best video in the whole world. I will put it on here. It's so funny. I'm looking forward to getting that camera back off of him and just going through everything just seeing all of what he's got up to all of the falls everything it's gonna be so funny it's so dramatic <laughs> it would be nice to be better at doing that sort of thing it'd be nice to build my confidence up and i probably should look into doing some kind of off-road training it's like a massive genre and i do envy people that are good at it and i know that i would really enjoy it i think the potential for me to be good at it is there once i get over the fear I mean, I bought Sparty so that I could do some low-level green laning, and I haven't done it because I'm too worried about it. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. That bike's not doing anything at the moment. I'm actually thinking about selling Sparty so that I can use the money to pay to do something else. And then they go and release the new Spark Pillar. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but they're releasing teasers for a Spark Pillar in 801. It's a bigger Sparty. It's like a, I think it's a parallel twin. And it looks amazing, it looks so good, it looks so nice, I, I don't know anything about it, I just know that I need it. 
because the one downfall with Sparty is that he's not got the biggest engine, he's not the fastest, and where I live, if you want to go and do anything, you kind of need to do like 100 miles of motorway first, unless you're just bimbling around all the little roads, which I feel like I've done to death. You have to do a lot of motorway, and that really sucks on Sparty. It's not enjoyable at all. But if there was a bigger one, bigger Sparty, I I would eat that up. I would have that in a heartbeat. Obviously, I haven't got any money at the moment, but I would I would find a way. I would lie about my income so I could get a loan or something. Anyway, wonder if I can get in front of this tractor. Love a tractor. Uh, oh god, what's in it? Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, it's just dribbling out of it. Oh my god. What if I end up like covered in... Look. <laughs> oh, two lanes. Get it. might be fun. I don't know if the GoPro's got enough juice left in it to record this or the off chance that it does. I want to show you guys the flooding but I can't show you it the way that I would want to because the road is shut. But I think there's another road that I can take and I don't know which one it is so I might have to pull over and have a look. But I think there's a road that isn't shut and you can go down it and you can see the floods and you can ride up to the edge of it. So what they do is they put big old barriers around so if there is like a, a road that's underwater then you just can't go down it which is fair enough because if you can't see the edge then there's rivers up either side which is the case quite often over here you could end up just driving into a river and no one would find you which is not good but i think there is a road where you can go and do that so we're gonna find it maybe so i talk about the floods all the time and i never actually show you so I want to show you. Here we go. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there is a there is a big barrier there, so that's that's a shame. But I'll let this guy get out of the way, and I might park up and just have a little walk. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna tuck Pinky out of the way, and I will show you. I will show you the flooding. Here we go. It even feels like there's a sea breeze because it's a little bit windy today. And this is the road, so it's not too bad actually. You could, well, that's actually pretty pathetic. You can ride through that. I don't know how far it goes. To be honest, I think this is down a little bit because it hasn't rained today. Yeah, I just love it. I love coming here and I love seeing this. Anyway, that's that. I hope you enjoyed my little tangent. Just thought I'd show you because I always talk about it and I never actually show you. I'm going to go and get Pinky and get the rest of the way home, get some lunch. And hopefully I'll be out later in the week to record something else because I have nothing lined up video wise at the moment. I need to create some more stuff. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And I will catch up with you guys really soon. Goodbye.